Okay, welcome back to the Hunter Call the Wild. I'm the Greyhaired Gamer, your host, and today we are back for episode number 20. And today we are back here in Rancho del Arroyo, uh, continuing our work, scouting out these zones, and discovering where these lovely, lovely whitetail are. Uh, so we can start shooting them and eventually spawning us a great one. Uh, thanks for joining us today. If you're a new viewer, returning viewer, uh, welcome. We truly appreciate you coming by. And uh, every little follow, every like, every thumbs up does wonders to help this channel out. Uh, so let's take a look at the map. And we'll give a little recap of what's been going on here in, in fabulous Mexico. Uh, we have been trying to set up for a great one grind. And if you're new to the game, Rancho uh, is only the second map to feature a great one. And that is a giant, giant white-tailed deer. Uh... It does take a lot of work to get ready for, but what we want to do is we're scouting out different areas, trying to find different zones where the white-tailed deer are hanging out, uh, eating, drinking, resting, whatever, uh, so that we can set up a rotation of areas. Uh, that as we go into one area, say this one, we know there are whitetail in this area around this lake. Uh, that we can go into this area one day, uh, shoot some whitetail, build up some hunting pressure, and then move on. Uh, say move on to like this lake and build up hunting pressure here, shoot some more deer, and so on and so on. And so by the time we get through our different lakes, our different zones, by the time we get through each one of them, we will have the hunting pressure erased back at our original zone, and we can go back in there and hunt a second time. Uh, this is the first lake that we visited on Rancho. We've been here about four or five episodes now, I believe. Uh, if you haven't seen any of them, you can catch them on our Twitch channel. Uh, or YouTube, both uh, titled Gray Hair Gamer. And you can see here we've almost gotten all our old hunting pressure erased from this lake. We have a little bit here, a little bit here yet uh, before uh, we want to erase that before it's 100% safe to come back into, into this area. So to, to make that happen, we've been checking out some other places uh we did have some very very good luck here at this lake and we've only scouted out half of it uh and as well we scouted out half of this lake uh, unfortunately we didn't have any luck uh, but i think we're going to come back to this lake and scout especially this peninsula and uh this shoreline so i think that's what we're going to do today we got to put in the work if we want to get the, the you know the trophies so let's go ahead and jump back to here we did discover this outpost which is very nice and convenient to this lake and if we manage to uh, have the rng gods smile on us and we find a couple whitetail zone on the other side of this lake this outpost will be very very convenient to come back here again and again uh, just a moment there's a beautiful picture of the mexican bobcat um i've shot a couple of them so far but i've yet to find any of the rare coats i'm really looking forward to that Okay, and guest starring with us today, as usual, is Gunner the Wonder Dog, the tracking machine. Say hi, Gunner. This guy has been just 
invaluable uh, to our hunts uh, with the tracking taking literally hours off our time uh, that we would have spent running around trying to go from track to track to track he he makes it happen in just minutes uh, our loadout today includes the the famous M1 Garand and we are sitting on just under 70 shells so we should be good for today uh, we also have our brand new as of last episode range finding binoculars so now we will know exactly how far these animals are away from us and we can adjust our shots or our zeroing accordingly uh, we are also packing our uh, Cyclone Vasquez 45, a 45 caliber BB gun, air rifle. And last but not least, we are packing our 12 gauge shotgun uh, with buckshot. Now we're carrying that for either when we're in very thick brush, uh, which, you know, you think Mexico is desert. Uh, no, you'd be wrong. There are some areas, especially around the lakes, that have some very, very thick underbrush. And this shotgun is invaluable when it when it comes to shooting through those. Uh, let's see. So that's it for our firearms. We are packing our Doblet for the white-tailed deer. And our other call is our wounded jackrabbit. I know, a truly hideous sound, right? Uh, but this will work on uh, coyotes as well as the Mexican bobcats that we, we find in this area or in this map. Okay, so let's take a look here. It is 11.26 in the morning. And while that would give us a lot of time, uh, daylight time yet to scout out here, I think we're going to try something a little bit different today. We are going to reset our clock uh, back to probably about a half hour to or so before our whitetail drink time. So that if we do get lucky and discover a whitetail drink zone along here, that we have the added opportunity to be able to catch those deer while they're still in their zone. So let's go on in here and uh, get ourselves set up. And we will go back to, we'll say 7.30. The drink time, now each map is different. Now when you're on Layton, Leighton Lakes is the other map that has Whitetail, the original, the home of the original Great One, let's say. Their schedules are different. Even though they're the same animal, same species, their schedule is different. On Leighton, drink times are in the afternoon, like 12.30 to, uh, I think it's 12.30 to 3.30. But here, these animals have their own schedule. So we're going to set back to about 7.30. That'll give us a little bit of time to get in and scout things out uh, before the zone officially activates. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so last time we were here, we scouted this section of the lake. And yeah, we found one zone and it was unfortunately not... Uh, white-tailed deer. So we want to start down here and work our way up along here. Uh, ideally, we want to make our way up to this uh, large peninsula. So without further ado, Gunner, you ready to work, buddy? Let's do this.
Okay, looks like we found the zone marker right here on our on our doorstep. That's awesome. And that is Mexican Bobcat. Okay. Now with the Bobcat, you would think a Bobcat would be considered a, a pretty big animal. Uh, surprisingly, they are not. Um, so if we try to use our 30-06 on it, we will be using ammo that's too large and we will not pass our harvest check for proper ammo. So it can hurt our trophy rating as well as our experience points and our money rewards. So for situations like that, we do have uh, our 45 Vasquez, our air rifle. It overlaps with uh, some of the categories of animals uh, with the M1, like we can shoot uh, white-tailed deer with our M1 as well as with our air rifle and we can pass the harvest checks for proper ammo but with the Mexican Bobcat uh, the 30 aught six round is too big uh, but with our air rifle is perfect we can pass all our checks and get our full benefits there okay let's see how we're doing okay it's time to cut off the trail here and start going cross country uh, on our scouting mission. So this uh, this part of the uh, the hunting job, you know, scouting areas, discovering zones, uh, may not be the most glamorous. Uh, sometimes you go uh, and not get a single kill. Two episodes ago, we were scouting and we only got two kills all day and they were just opportunity that we weren't near a zone uh, anything like that we just happened to have a couple animals randomly cross our trail and and that happens you know but the main objective uh-oh what's he growling at gunner what are you growling at buddy is there a predator around your dog have will do more than just track for you okay and i think there might be something around here he will growl like that if a predator species is nearby as well uh when you are about to spook an animal he will kind of whine and give you a message right above the compass is his status and he will give you a message saying uh, critical position, meaning that you're about to spook an animal. So with both of those situations, uh, your dog can alert you to animals being very close by that you may not even see, hear, or even know are there. So your dog is definitely worth a lot more than just being a, uh, a tracking machine. Now... Gunner here definitely he is a tracking machine man he does not lose that trail. Like I said he can cover a trail in two minutes that it would take me twenty minutes to uh, to get through and and to find uh, to find our harvest. Okay, so we are not really worried about. Uh, stealth at this point we want to get up here to this lake shore where we are you know obviously more likely to find a drink zone near a water source so we just want to kind of eat up the ground we're not really worried about uh, about spooking anything at this point I thought I heard another footstep that was not Gunner. Let's have him sit a moment. So he'll quit tromping around there. Good boy. He'll quit tromping around and make a noise. 
So now if we hear footsteps. Oh, he's scratching. <laughs> they had apparently added some new animations for the dogs there. They're great. They'll start digging a hole. He'll scratch. Uh, very, very realistic. I give, I give props to... Uh, ah, what is that? That is Mexican Bobcat. Uh, he must have seen us because uh, we are not downwind from him. The wind is off to the side. Okay, we reached a ray point. We want to try to angle down here closer to uh, to the shoreline. And again, on Mexico, the new feature here, these giant killer cacti, uh, they will hurt you a bit if you run into them. So that's something that you, we have not seen on any of the other maps. Okay, like I said, today we're scouting. But if we do get targets of opportunity, uh, we will take it. We will tr we will try and take the kills. So we'll give this bobcat a couple minutes of stealth to see if we can uh, see if we can find him. Maybe get ourselves a little extra money, a little extra experience, and maybe even a trophy. Who knows? Okay, there are some trails. Uh, now remember, just because you hear a warning cry or a call like we did from that bobcat, and it seemed like it was pretty close, it doesn't necessarily mean it is close. They could be up to a hundred, a hundred and fifty meters uh, away from you when they make that call. Uh, and also you have to figure the behavior of the individual animal. Okay, now like with whitetail, if they make a warning call, they will usually, usually stand their ground. And they will hang out there to see what happens. Uh, with the bobcat here in Mexico, and uh, also the, the black bear... On Leighton, uh, we've seen many times where they will give a warning call and then take off running. So just because we heard that bobcat call uh, doesn't mean he's still there. And also, you know, he could have been very far away or relatively far away, even though it sounded like he was literally right next to us. Okay, so we made it up to the lake, and again, last time we were here, we scouted out this this uh, left bank as we look at the map, and we did not have, we did luck into a one kill there. Uh, it was attack of opportunity, or target of opportunity, rather, uh, but we didn't find the zones that we were looking for. So today we're going to start moving up this right side of the lake and so we want to keep our eyes open definitely uh, our ears open and one important thing with when you're looking for drink zones specifically is not to look just along the shoreline okay drink zones can be 10 meters back 20 meters back I've even found them as far as 30 35 meters back from the shore so we all we want to keep our eyes open through this through these woods as well uh, now this is one of the more temperate zones here on rancho that it is a mix of trees as well as shrubs so we have some underbrush here that you can see kind of makes uh, spotting a little more difficult uh, but we should still be able to see zones they like these tracks here and that looks like our, our bobcat tracks that growled at us uh, usually the zones and the tracks tend to appear 
and you can see them through the brush uh, if you're close enough. So while we want to do some hunting here, we'd ho we would like to get some kills. Our main objective today is scouting and finding those zones. So we are not really going to go what I call full stealth mode, being crouched down, uh, applying our scent blocker, uh, things like that. We're not going to do that until we see an animal or get a warning call, something like that. Uh, we're going to walk. And at the same time, we're not going to go full, full crazy either and just go running pell-mell crazy through through the brushes either we're not we're going to take the happy medium we're going to walk so we can still cover a good distance and uh we don't accidentally miss any zones and then like i said if we do catch a zone or uh, see something hear something then we'll, we'll go full stealth so we want to keep our eyes open out here in front of us Let's check the clock. It is 8.12. So drink times here at Rancho officially start for the whitetail uh, at 8.30. Again, each species has their own schedule and you, you, get to, you, get, you have to learn those. But we know from finding other drink zones for the whitetail that they officially start at 8.30. So we can find uh, deer going into those zones anywhere from, say, 8 o'clock, quarter after 8, to almost 9 o'clock. They are not going to roll in exactly at 8.30. So again, we want to keep scanning uh, these woods as well as the shore. That's why I've kind of positioned myself off the shore a little bit. Uh, one, so we can see more of the woods behind us as well. Uh, reason number two, if there is a zone up in front of us, we will have a little bit of concealment, a little bit of cover walking through the woods than just walking up along the, the shoreline. And so far we are loving the new addition to our gear, these range-finding binoculars. They can tell us exactly how far an animal is from us uh, before uh, last episode is when we got these. We unlocked them two episodes ago, but we didn't have enough money. Uh, they do cost $12,000. Yeah, some of the items in this game uh, can get pretty pricey. Uh, so we had to do a little saving up. And uh, so now we finally unlocked them. But before that, we were, we were using a trick with the map. And I can explain that very quickly, that when you, you know, put your scope up here and you spot an animal, and you see it, see an animal, you can hit X to spot it. And that will give you some extra information about the animal. Well, one trick with this game is that the last animal you spot appears as a little icon on your map. It's a little green circle. Okay, so say we spot it. Uh, that sounds like deer. Uh, say this was an animal that we spotted. And this would be a little green circle with an animal picture inside of it. Now if we go and place a waypoint on there, that waypoint will appear out here in our vision somewhere. And then it we will be able to see the distance to that waypoint. Okay, you're not going to get the that waypoint exactly on the animal uh, but you can get pretty close and it will give you a very close approximation of how far that animal is away uh, but now that we 
have these wonderful rangefinders. Uh, we don't need to do that trick anymore. But yeah, that that little technique using that waypoint really really helped us out a lot in a, in a lot of situations. Okay, Gunner, sit, buddy. We're hearing some stuff up here. Now with Gunner, we can tell him to sit, and he will stay there either until we call him. Yeah, there's something up here walking. Oh, yeah, there's a deer. Let's get under some cover here. Yes, right there, and it is a buck. Oh, there's a few buck in there, so I think we got us a zone. Okay, we are close enough. We can take these guys with the air rifle uh, or the M1. The M1 is definitely going to have some more stopping power. Lift your head up there, buddy. And we hit the damn tree. We were too close to the trunk of this tree. You can tell by the strange echo. Ah, uh, that tree just cost us a kill. <sighs> oh, mamma mia. Well, that was not a great start to uh, today's hunt. I thought for sure we were around it, around the edge of it. Uh, but apparently we smacked right into the tree trunk here of this locust. And, uh, yeah, cost us a deer. But, on the other hand, we can still salvage this situation. Uh, we did make some noise, sure. And we did scare those deer away. But, we didn't shoot any of them. Okay, and we did not, uh, get any hunting pressure. So, while those animals are spooked we do have a chance to get them to come back. Okay. It's only when you start building up hunting pressure or wounding some of the animals uh, that they will basically take off and not come back. So we do have a chance to use our, our doe bleat call here and get them to come back. Uh, but back to what I was saying about our dog gunner, now he's lying down. Uh, he will stay there until we either call him. Uh, we can push a, do a quick tap down on the D-pad and it will whistle and tell him to come heal. Or the second thing is if we get too far away from him. I believe it's 100 meters. I'm not exactly sure about that. But as soon as we get that distance away, he will automatically... Uh, come heal and come back up to us. So let's try our call here. It looks like there's one right up here, right in front of us. No, we don't want the shotgun. Although in this brush we could use the shotgun. But I thought I saw something right through this tree. Now it may take a moment or two uh, for these animals to calm down uh, and also to respond to the call. But this call, we know from checking our inventory, uh, has a range of 150 meters. So as long as they are still in that area, they have a chance to respond to it. And with the whitetail, they are... Uh, they are pretty, how do I want to say this? It's pretty common for them to respond. Uh, some of the other species, uh, say here for Mexico, for example, the bobcat, uh, when, you, when you make a call there with your uh, jackrabbit call, they can respond or, or not. It's really pretty much a 50-50. Uh, there are perks that you can unlock perks or skills that will increase your success using calls, uh, but I don't have any of those unlocked yet. Okay, but uh, 
on a positive side, yeah, we flubbed that shot. Uh, we we put that slug right into the into the tree, and that was unfortunate. But to see all these deer here in this area right as the drink time has started uh, is a very good sign that there uh, we have a very good chance of there being a zone around so we want to definitely keep our eyes open and there was quite a few in that group I was I was surprised you definitely see much larger groups uh, here on Rancho than you did on Leighton Okay, there. Where's where's that coming from? Uh, we missed the, we missed it. We were too slow. But it looks like these deer are moving on up the uh, on up the coast here, up the shoreline. So that's fine. That's where we're planning to go to. Okay, so let's switch back to our our binoculars here. They do have a little bit more zoom than the scope we're using. And as well, we can uh, spot animals using our binoculars. Okay, this is one of our males, our bucks here. There are, uh, he's a class four. Okay, and again, this thick underbrush is being a bit of a disadvantage for us here. But we're gonna, we're gonna keep scouting keep our eyes open here as we can to find out where these guys were, were rolling in here too. Okay, they're apparently not coming back. We must have spooked them pretty well or that they are heading to a uh, another zone. Okay, we got some collared peccary tracks in here and some poop. They are like a, uh, they are a new species here for Rancho. Uh, like the whitetail, we've seen the whitetail on Leighton before, uh, but as well as here. But the, the peccary is new to Rancho. It's a, like a smaller version of the wild hog or feral pig that we've seen on a couple of the other maps but they are uh, smaller they look basically like a uh, a Vietnamese potbelly pig almost oh hello no that's a rock <laughs> uh, you'll find that a lot here too in, uh, in Rancho uh, rocks and logs lying around that, that play play tricks on your eyes hey what's that there's there's our peccary there now while we're not specifically looking for zones uh, for this animal if we find a zone we will we will examine it and we will gladly file that little bit of information away uh, for future hunts I mean, they're, they're an interesting little animal. Uh, what's nice with them is you normally don't find just one of them. Uh, you usually find at least three or four, uh, if not more, in a group. So you have more targets when you find them. Uh, unfortunately, they're usually in the underbrush, in these shrubs and bushes. Uh, so... 
while we have been on this map a few times now, we've, we've had about four or five hunts, we have not shot one of those yet. We do not have one of those uh, uh, as a trophy yet. Uh, we've caught sight of them once or twice, but we were not able to get a clear shot, unfortunately. But that's okay. As I always say, if we don't kill them today, we'll kill them tomorrow. How are we doing on our map? And we're making up some good time here. We're about a half hour into uh, whitetail drink time. And unfortunately, we have not found any zones. I'm wondering now where these... They were traveling somewhere. I'm wondering where they were heading to. You would think that being when the time we saw them, being that close to a drink time, that they would be heading to a drink zone. But so far we haven't seen anything yet. Was that you gonna make a noise? Huh? Come here, buddy. Let's make sure you got got your hearts up. Uh, he's only got one. Who's a good boy? And again, with uh, with the dog, you can see on the right there, he's got three lightning bolts for attentive. That's how hard he's going to work for you. Uh, and then you have content underneath with the hearts. That's uh, how quickly he will gain experience as a companion. So we want to have him more hearts. Okay. We, there. That got him a heart. Got to give him a cookie. Um, with the dog, they only gain perks as they level up as a companion. See, they level up two different ways. We, as a player, we level up with general experience, which boosts our level overall and unlocks skills and perks. And then we have our individual weapon experience, our rifle experience, pistol experience, archery experience, so on, uh, that unlocks uh, new weapons and accessories for those weapons. Uh, with the dog, they level up as a companion, which that's the, the truly important one that unlocks them perks. And then they also level up as a tracker. Uh, which, you know, obviously makes them more effective tracking and harder for them to lose the trail. Uh, again, not seeing anything. And that's 171 meters. That is within the, the, the computer's view range. I mean, render distance. So if there were something there, we should be able to see them. Uh, and how you get the experience for your dog, the companionship points you get uh, by having him out here, out here with us, by have, spending time with him, by interacting with him, and him having those hearts uh, gets him companionship points. You only get tracking experience when he is actively tracking. You have to tell him, search for blood and he starts tracking something, he gets experience there, and when he finds uh, a downed animal, he will also get experience points for tracking. U.S. hunters love the glass terrain with binoculars, but if you find yourself in denser cover, tracking's the way to go. Just make sure you keep your bearings. Okay, I thought we would find something up along this this sh side of this shore uh, I have seen other people's maps for Rancho and they had some zones up here but as we've mentioned before every every person's map is unique there we go there we go there's a drink zone that's what we were looking for 
So he is 344 meters away. Now here we'll show you this trick how we used to do it. Okay, now the last animal we spotted is boom, represented by this little green icon. And we would take and place a waypoint right there. And you can see the waypoint says 346. The glasses say 344. So we got that pretty, pretty close to the actual distance. Uh, so that is one way, uh, one little workaround, exploit, whatever you'd like to call it, of uh, being able to judge distance without a rangefinder scope or a rangefinder binoculars. And when you're a brand new player, you are not going to have either of those. So it, 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 proves itself to be a very useful trick. Okay, since we are 300 meters away from that guy, we can walk here a little bit more. Gunner, he lost a heart. Let's see if we can play with him a little bit or pet him. And get him another heart. Hmm, nope, okay. Uh... When we get to about 150, 175 meters, then we need to worry about our noise uh, spooking this deer. But until we, till then, we're okay. Now we are close enough. Uh, now in a previous episode, we unlocked a perk for our weapons. We put, we got two points in it now, and that's our zeroing. You can see clear down at the bottom right corner, uh, it says 75 meters. Now for this rifle, that is considered short range. Every weapon is different. Uh, the air rifle has different ranges. Pistols have a different range, etc. Uh, now when you first start the game and you have zero points in that perk, you only have medium range unlocked. Okay? And... So when your, your sights are zeroed in for medium range for that weapon, and in this case of the M1 is 150 meters. So if the animal is closer than 150 meters or further away, you have to adjust your aim. That bullet is not going to land right where you put the crosshairs. Okay? So we had to guesstimate every shot. We, were, we leveled up and we put one point into that zeroing perk and that unlocked short range for us. So now we have short range, which if we can get right to 75 meters, we can put the crosshairs on there and we know that bullet will hit dead on where the crosshair is at 75. Or we also have 150 meters medium range and uh, that was it. Uh, in the last episode, previous episode, we unlocked our second point in that. Now we also have long range. So we now have the ability to take far off shots 300 meters and know that right where we put that crosshair, that's where that bullet is going to land. So now you can see we our waypoint there before is a 283. We are zeroed for 300. That's a difference of only 15 meters. So there will be only a slight variation from where we put the crosshair to where we put the bullet. The bigger the difference, uh, the more variation. So we could take a shot if that deer was still there we could take a shot zeroed in at 300 meters and know that generally where we put the crosshair, uh, that's where the bullet is going to hit. So we would be safe. And that's something you have to get yourself in the habit of checking uh, when, when you're going out on hunts. Uh, because if you have your zero set for 300 meters and you get an animal right up in your face at close range and you pull that trigger, 
you are going to hit very, very high. And you have a chance of missing organs, missing vital shots, or even missing the animal completely. Uh, because there is a big difference when, uh, when you're zeroed for short range or long range. And again, each weapon is different. Like now we have uh, our M1 is 300 meters, 150 meters, and 75 meters. Now let's compare that to our air rifle, which does not have near the power. There we have long range is only 100 meters. Medium is only 50, and short is 25. Uh, our shotgun, 75 meters for long range. 50 meters medium and 25 for short range. So there you can see how big of a difference the different weapons make. And uh, you can also see some of the reasoning why I have chosen to, com to carry a combination of weapons. That we have our M1 for long range shots uh, and, and that are still very powerful at long range. They still have a lot of knockdown power. Uh, we have our air rifle for closer shots or smaller animals. And then we have our shotgun, which excels at very, very close range. And that's the only zone that we've, we've stumbled across there so far. Wow. Okay, let's go on. We've had our, our little discussion here. Oh, hello. Okay, that's a doe. We want to get some kind of money out of this deal. So we'll take our air rifle. She was nice and close. That may have been a spine shot. But uh, while this weapon, this air rifle, doesn't have a lot of stopping power, especially at long distances, when they're up close, 25, 50 meters, it packs a surprising amount of punch. And uh, this, this will take down take down whitetail when they're when they're in good and close like that okay there's where she went running right there uh, I caught a glimpse of her she had her head down and that is an animation in this game that shows they only do that when they're wounded okay so gunner the wonder dog you know what time it is buddy it's time for you to go to work Okay, so even though we don't see blood right at our feet, we know we shot this animal. We know it hit. So we know there's got to be blood around here somewhere. So we're going to have, yeah, have him search for blood. And he will, you know, check out this whole little area. And he found it. He's tracking blood there now. So all we have to do is follow him. Where did he go? Okay, there we can see the outline of him through the bushes, or we can also check the map. The second smaller, uh, the second smaller circle is our dog. And uh, while we're looking at the map, you can see we now have a splash of hunting pressure, and that only appears when an animal dies. You don't get that for wounding an animal. You don't get that for almost killing an animal. You only get that when you, when you get a kill. And we got us some more deer up here somewhere. Ah, looks like we got a zone here. See that collection of footprints? That is probably a mark of a zone. Okay, Gunner, we're going to be coming. Uh, surprisingly... The, the barking of your dog and the noises that he makes, uh, to me, now I could be wrong, doesn't seem to usually spook the animals too much. There we go, drink zone, bingo. This is what we were looking for. So that is now two drink zones that we've discovered during this little 
adventure. And there's a deer right there. Let's go ahead and pop him too. It's a doe, but we need the money. And there is one in the neck, so that one's going to go down. And we were zeroed for short range on that, 25 meters. So we, we're pretty much guaranteed that those were both, uh, both hits. Okay, Gunner, we're coming, buddy. We're coming. Where are you hiding at? Okay, and yes, we can even see the blood, blood from here. Okay, now we just discovered that zone. Uh, we do not want to make the mistake that I made a couple hunts ago. I got greedy, and man, I popped like four deer out of this one zone, and I accidentally deleted the zone that, uh, that I was, you know, wanted to save and to hunt again and again. Uh, now you can see here where we sh found that marking for that zone was pretty much right where we are, but it shows the icon for that uh, for this drink zone to be clear down here. So don't think that just because the icon is right there that that's where the hunting or the drink zone is. It can be a, a pretty good area around that icon. Okay, Gunner. Yeah, buddy. We're coming. We're coming. Chill. Now, one thing we can do as a uh, trick as well is we got this blood here. Uh, for the second doe that we shot, Gunner's still tracking the first one. What we can do is we can place a waypoint right where we're standing right now so that we can run off, track this deer, and we know we can come back and pick up the second track without, without any problems. Okay, Gunner, we're coming, we're coming. So, since we are not going to take any more deer out of this area... Uh, we don't need to be stealthy. We can we can go here. See there, he's tracking that first trail. And man, he's on it. He does not lose his way in the underbrush. Uh, he does not lose his way when the animals run crazy uh, back and forth, back and forth over their own tracks. And Gunner, he is on it. And there we go. There's our, there's our doe. Now you can see... We did get the kill with the air rifle, but it, it ran a pretty good way. So obviously, our air rifle does not have the oomph, that put down power, that drop them in their tracks with one shot punch that the M1 does. But for, yeah, we were high, we hit it in the spine. Uh, but for close range, as well as uh, smaller animals, it'll still take them down. Okay, so now what we want to do, we claim that animal, and we got us a little bit of money, and a little bit of uh, rifle experience, and uh, it was just a doe, so we didn't get a trophy, and we did not get quite as much money and experience as we would have if it was a buck, but you know, money's money. We just dropped 12 grand on a new set of binoculars, so we'll we'll take what uh, we'll take what money uh, we can. So the big thing here is now that see everyone we took two deer out of here, and that that hunting pressure is getting a lot darker. Uh, we don't want to take any more out of this area. So there we go. We had our waypoint. We found our way right back to where we shot this second deer. And now Gunner, Gunner, buddy, do your thing, man. Go find us a deer. And we can actually put away our rifle for now. Uh, something else we can do to help us out is to select this trail. Okay, and you see now we uh, have unlocked a perk with the track knowledge. Before, when we examined this track, it only told us it was a blood trail and it was a bleed rate of medium. Now we also know that when this animal came past here, he was at 50 to 75% health. That is a little bit of new 
information uh, that, that we can know from our perks. Let's see here. See, now he's only 25 to 50%. So he is dropping rather quickly. And so we should have us a dead deer laying up here very shortly. Zero to 25%. And if you do not have the dog, uh, harvest found. Okay, you found him. Where's it at? Where's it at, buddy? If you don't have the dog, that is very valuable information to know uh, how much health that animal has left. Where is this deer? Gunner saying he found it. But I don't see it. Here's some tracks. It went back. I know, buddy. I know. Where is it? Where did it go? It's not out here floating around in the water, is it? No? Usually when you shoot an animal and it goes in the water, it usually drifts back over to the shore so you can claim it. Wow, that's bizarre. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go back here to our last blood spot. And Gunner, we're going to have to do our tracking on our own. Buddy. You're killing me here. It's saying he went back this way. And I do not see it. Uh, usually when you're close to, the, like right next to the animal... It will say, uh, collect harvest, and pop the little button in the middle of the screen. Is it in here? No. Our deer disappeared. Okay, buddy. Come on. Come on, heal. That is strange. I have never had that happen to me before. Wow. So we are apparently going to lose out on that one. But, man, we, we don't want to spend all day here looking for one doe. If it was like a nice big buck or something, yeah. But uh, just for this doe, I think we're just going to cut our losses and move on now we did find we did spot this zone up here and yeah look at that right there boom now they are traveling what time is it 10 30 their drink times and if you put the cursor over that should be to 11 they shouldn't really be traveling yet and uh now out here if we spotted that like that buck where'd he go Oh, he's clear out here. Uh, we can take a shot at him. Because the hunting pressure... Oh, look, it looks like he's even stuck. The hunting pressure... Builds from where you shoot the animal. Not where they go down and not where you're standing. So even though we're standing in an area where there is hunting pressure... Where this deer is standing, where we would shoot it, does not have any. So we could take a pop at him and put him down uh, without adding to the hunting pressure of where we're standing right now. So that is also one little... Uh, so it's not like a cheat, kind of an exploit... That when you shoot an animal, say we take a shot at this animal here, this deer, and it runs off. We're not sure if we hit it. Uh, we're not sure if it died. As long as this area remains clear with no hunting pressure, that animal did not die. Now, if we take a shot at it and it runs off and we don't see it go down, uh, we're not sure if it's dead, and we check the map, 
and we go from having zero hunting pressure to having some, then we know that animal died. The hunting pressure only pops up when, when they die. Now where it died, where it dropped, uh, that's a whole different story. You can only tell, oh man, that's actually too deep of water to let us go in, come on. Uh, we don't know where that animal died, but we, we know that it's dead. Critical position, and here, here Gunner whining means we're about to spook something. That's, that's our dog, man, proving his worth as more than just a tracker. Okay, so let's back up here a little bit. Let's back up, get under some cover. There's a warning call. Let's tell Gunner to sit so that we only hear our animals that we want to kill. We only hear their footprints, or their footsteps, rather. And it sounds like something's moving around. There, Gunner alerted us. Man, we didn't even know we were close to an animal. And he, he let us know. And he let us know before we spooked it, too, which is awesome. Okay, I'm not really seeing anything. Uh, and we gotta keep on our mission. That, uh, said every, every day you go out, you wanna have a plan. And you wanna, you wanna stick to that plan. Our main mission today was to find zones, to scout. So we we lucked out and we got, well, we had two kills, but only found one corpse. Uh, so, but we want to stay on that mission. We want to keep, keep scouting. And like I said, we, if we take some deer out of here too, that's, that's bonus. But we don't want to spend all day just trying to kill one animal. If we scout us out a couple zones, we can come back here time after time after time and end up taking a lot of animals. That's like they say, you, uh, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. It's, it's similar here. If you find an animal, you get one kill. You find a zone, man, you can get a bunch of kills. You can come back time after time after time. So we, we have had a little bit more success here on this side. Wow, something's real close. I think we will bust out the M1 here. We, yeah, we are on short range, 75 meters. So, again, if there's a deer like right there, that is a lot closer than 75 meters. That's probably only 20 meters. So, we will still want to actually aim low because at that range, the bullet is still climbing. Yeah, bullets, if you ever uh, hunted in real life, you will know. Um, oh, right there. Right there, right there, right there. Come on out. Oh, he's, he's taken off, and that is also a doe. So we are not going to risk uh, spooking them. Uh, but if you study ballistics or you did any real life hunting, uh, in a nutshell, a bullet does not fly straight like, say, like a laser beam, like a laser pointer. It actually will rise and then fall. When a bullet first comes out of the barrel, it will lift up. Ooh, hello. We got some activity here. Is this a stow again? No, that's a buck. Oh, man, we let him go.
And I miss both of those. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, bullet will rise when it first comes out of the barrel. Up to... Oh, and there's a... That's why they were moving. That was a Mexican bobcat was chasing him. So I know we didn't hit him either, but we scared the shit out of him. Uh... Said a bullet will rise when it first comes out of the barrel. And then as it travels further away. <coughs> whoa, hello. Uh, it will start to drop. As it loses velocity and uh, gravity takes over. Then it will drop. So very short ranges. The bullet can actually hit higher than where you aim, and then at long range, the bullet can hit lower. Come on, buddy. Come up here and see if there's any blood. See if we lucked out. We're not seeing any hunting pressure, so... So far, we know we haven't killed anything. Uh, but there could... There could be blood, and he just hasn't dropped yet. Is that blood right there? No, no found. Okay. All right. Okay, let's uh, head on out here and scout. Uh, since we just made a shitload of noise. And everything spooked out of there be between us and that bobcat. We're just going to go ahead and just scout it quick. We want to try and get the rest of the, the shoreline of this lake. Yeah, we're, we're already past the drink time. It's only till 11. But I was hoping to have it uh, scouted before the drink zone was over. Yeah, we got a little distracted. Yeah, it's okay. Now, we did find that one zone there, which covers a lot of this area. It'd be nice if we could find a second one out here. But we won't know until until we do, do the work. Until we get out here, feet on the ground, and scout this stuff out. Now, we're not seeing any tracks right in here, so that's not a good sign. Let's move back here a little bit. Now, we had those deer just come running through. There was three or four of them. They had to leave tracks. They had to come from somewhere out on this peninsula. So, maybe... We'll catch them when we come back around up here. Right now, to find the zone they came from uh, is, is more important to us and more valuable to us than uh, just finding one individual animal's tracks. Wow, cacti growing down in the water. That's cool. Never see that in real life. And we got something making noise over that direction. And uh, as we said before, uh, usually the the markings for the zones, whether it be the little tufts of grass uh, or the knockdown vegetation, usually show up through the brush, through the thicket, uh, as well as tracks like our dog does. Like when he was on the other side of the bush, we still saw his outline through the bushes. And normally that is the same thing that will happen uh, with your zones, the zone markers, and the tracks. 
So, man, we're really not seeing much of anything out here in this... Ah, what is this? Okay, so here is a zone. We were already tracking that. Okay, we did not see that because it was already selected. It was green. So we didn't have the contrast of the white. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. And now it shows... You can see we are plainly found that marking here but it shows the zone as being clear out here. So good deal, good deal. One, two, three uh, white tail drink zone so far. Excellent. Uh, that is putting this side, well, at least this side of the lake on par with this lake where we had, we did have four. We accidentally got greedy and erased this one. Uh, but this lake, we did see a uh, fair bit of activity with the deer up here. So I still suspect that there is another, uh, a fifth drink zone up in this area somewhere. But we will not know for sure until we, we go check out the rest of this lake over here in another hunt. Uh, so, and yeah, we had a great hunt when we... Uh, came through here. We took one day and we scouted it. Unfortunately, we missed the active drink zone by like 10 minutes. So when we got here, the animals were actually on their way out. Uh, so what we did is on the next hunt, and that was episode 18 uh, of our series. If you want to check that out on YouTube, man, we had a great hunt. Uh, we came back on a separate day right at the beginning of the drink time and we just rolled all the way down through these zones and hit all four of them in one drink zone time in one day's hunting and we ended up knocking out uh, 10 deer all white tail uh, seven bucks and like five trophies in an hour and a half hunt so man, it, it was it was definitely my best hunt uh, so far here on Rancho, and would rank up uh, as probably one of the top five hunts that I've I've had in my career uh, uh, playing this game. Really fabulous. So now we are at we're past the end of official drink zone time but we could still catch uh, some deer traveling out of the area uh, as well we will still find any zones that might be up here uh, just because the animals aren't actively drinking here now doesn't mean the zones disappear we can still find them we can still discover them and uh, they will get recorded on our map I just think that our, our time for luck shots and uh, targets of opportunity uh, is over with the, with the drink time being over. They're going to move out and probably uh, move to a rest zone. Okay, like here you can see how we see those white tracks through the shrubs, through the underbrush. If there is a zone close enough, we will we will see that as well. But we still have to keep keep our eyes open. You know, if we're not paying attention and we just run right by us and not examine it, then you know that's that's on us. Now we are hearing something. I didn't get turned around enough to see what it was to examine the sound, but we did hear something up here making making noise, probably a warning call of some kind. But we can't tell what that is yet. Okay, so let's get our waypoint back up here. Keep us on track. Keep us on our path. Okay, now you can see here, 
these tracks they are heading out of this area and there was the zone that we discovered previously we were we were way down there using our glasses when we uh, when we spotted this zone by spotting the animal as he was using it so that's the two ways you can you can discover zones uh, let's let's give buddy a a little bit of a attention here hopefully try and get him another heart keep him making that good XP as a companion no didn't get you another heart okay that's all right it will level up eventually and we did have uh, something else growling at us down here with these new species here on uh, Rancho uh, I'm not a hundred percent familiar with the, with the the sounds that they make their various mating calls and uh, warning calls I'm still learning them but after a while getting to hear them and uh, checking on them yeah you'll you'll be able to tell just by sound what's like that there I don't know what that is yet and we weren't quick enough they will pop up there it is there it is okay that's the collared peccary peccary uh, that's that little pig but as I said, after a while of playing a map, you get familiar with it. You will know without even looking what what animal is making that sound, and whether it's a mating call or a warning call. Uh, and that just comes with time and experience. And there's one of those peccaries right there. Now I do believe with them we do want to take them with the the M1 and we've dropped them uh oh something's coming running now these pigs can get aggressive so we do want to be alert that others in the group might come try to try to run us down uh, but we drop both of those right there literally in their tracks they didn't know what the hell hit them and those are actually our first peccaries uh, harvested for for this map uh, as I mentioned before we we caught sight of a couple of them before uh, but we didn't have clear shots at them and they were actually close enough we probably could have taken them with uh, with our 12 gauge and uh, and there's deer we still might find some white tail zones up here you never can tell but we just added oh yeah you can see how big of an area that hunting pressure will cover there now so uh, uh oh something's running Uh, that may be just gunner running around. Okay, so sorry, I get this. You get distracted sometimes here playing when you got so much going on. Uh, but these are our first harvests of the peccary, so we want to check them out. You can see that they're like basically uh, they they remind me definitely of like a like kind of like a Vietnamese potbelly pig, uh, just not very fat ones. Uh, but we want to check our harvest check okay so we got him well you can see the the m1 at 30-06 at that close range wow it went right through the skull the neck uh, the spine 
and still penetrated that that lung. Now, now what we want to do is right here, 34. We get didn't we were three points away from a from a silver. Oh, this was a female. That is why we did not get uh, uh, a a trophy. <laughs> And you can see that while we did use the proper ammo, uh, the 30 6 uh, we damaged trophy organs, which in this case is, uh, is the skull. You can't... Hello. You cannot uh, mount... Ah, come on. How long is it going to stand there? You cannot mount an animal and taxiderm it uh, if you blow their head off. And did we just delete that zone as well? I believe we did. Yes, we did. We just uh, spent all that time to discover the zones. And then we just deleted it. Yeah, you can see here, nine hits, three hits with one shot, nine hits with the other. That buckshot definitely lives up to its name. Uh, it will drop a buck in his tracks. Now that actually turned out to be a silver. We are allowed two hits, so yeah, there we did pass all our organ or our harvest checks. Proper ammo by using the buckshot two times or less. Now the number of pellets don't count. It's the number of shots you fire. Okay, so between the two shots, we actually put 14 hits in, but we only fired twice, and that's what's important. Intact trophy organs, meaning the antlers, the skull... Uh, and we hit one vital organ or more, which we hit it twice uh, that lung. So we got us a silver out of that. And there's this, another one of these peccaries standing right here. Well, since we already wasted our uh, zone bucket... We already did the damage to our zones, so more hunting pressure is not going to do any more damage. And if this guy is just going to stand right out in front of us and let us smack him, boy, well, we'll smack him. That was actually a gold medal for that one. Good deal. We had to pass all our harvest checks on that. So we are now getting a bit of... Wow, look how bright that is. <laughs> Man, uh, we're definitely getting a few points in experience with our, with our shotgun today. You can see how effective it is at short range. And what is this? Is this blood up here? Yes, it is. Gunner, buddy boy. Come on up here. You can see here. Wow, I'm trying to get on the, the actual blood. That is a big splash of blood. Uh, you can see how effective this 12 gauge is being in these short, close quarters, uh, thick brush areas. Now, if we were firing a rifle, there is a very good chance like the bullet could come through this bush and go down there and deflect off this tree trunk. And there's another one, man. We'll keep rolling with them. Okay, Gunner, we're gonna come, we're coming, buddy. See, now he's gonna charge us. He's gonna try to charge us. But he should drop here in just a second. Yeah, he's bleeding. He's bleeding. There, he dropped. Okay. 
But for close oh. quarters and then these thick brush situations, oh. you can see that having that 12 gauge, man, it's it's worth it. So right now we're just racking up some uh, some shotgun points. We're racking up a bit of money. Good boy, Gunner. Keep on going right there. You found him. That's a good boy. That's why you get the cookies. And that was a silver, almost $900. Yeah, who's a good boy? You get a cookie for that one, pal. You've been doing the work. Uh, I'm not sure what we need as far as shotgun score to unlock uh, the birdshot. Uh, which is ideally what we want for the bunny rabbits, for the pheasant, for the turkey. Uh, that's been our goal with the shotgun, is to unlock that. We we started off with the buckshot, so we have not had a choice as far as ammunition. But uh, with these animals, with the deer, with the peccary, we can use the buckshot and not have it be uh, overkill like it would be blasting a, a cute, excuse me, a cute and fuzzy little bunny with, with buckshot. Like in real life, there would literally be nothing left of the bunny but a few patches of blood and fur. <laughs> Are those something right there? No, maybe not. Okay, how we doing on the map here? Okay, we pretty much made it up to uh, where we left off from our other adventure, our other scouting mission here. We are going to go right down here into this little peninsula a little bit just to see if there's a zone there. And then I think we're going to call this scouting mission complete. Uh, we did do better today with uh, with the kills and making some money and XP. We definitely did better today than we did in a couple in, in our past uh, scouting missions. So that's a bonus. Uh, we did hmm, get a bit greedy and delete a zone by accident. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, when, as I said, when we deleted the one before, just because the deer stopped coming to that point to drink, doesn't mean they stop drinking. They still have to go uh, to get water somewhere. Uh, it just won't be there. So they will establish a, a new zone, a new drinking place somewhere else. And we'll just have to go discover that. Uh, so while it was inconvenient and it was a bummer that we we blasted that zone out, uh, it's not the end of the world. Okay, we'll give one one last look over here. And we're not really seeing too much. Uh, but we we didn't find any zones over there last time we were here. Uh, so, let's take a look at our map. Now we have this entire lake uh, scouted out. We scored with, well, we had three, but still we have two whitetail drink zones. That was our main objective. So that does make this worthwhile to come back here at least part of it. Uh, it's kind of inconvenient that our nearest hunting outpost is on the far side of the lake from those zones. Uh, but there's there's a couple things we could do about that. 
is we could scout further up here and maybe luck out and find a hunting reserve on this side of the lake uh, or we could we could take one of our tents and come back and I, like I said you want to come back like a couple hundred meters probably 200 meters or so and we could pop a tent right in here somewhere anywhere in here really and then we would have a convenient spot to rest or to fast travel to uh, to hit these zones up whenever we wanted uh, so there we now have three confirmed areas that we know of or that are going to be good for whitetail you can see here from the beginning of the episode We've erased more of this old hunting pressure by adding new hunting pressure. And we could go back there and start hunting again. We would just want to be careful down here. Uh, so we are about ready to have that cleaned up. So we have one area, two areas, and now three areas that we know for sure will have white-tailed deer uh, in them during that drink time. Uh, we probably want to get one or two more. Uh, we did find, while they weren't both drink zones, we did find a whitetail drink zone as well as an eating zone down at this uh, small lake. But we scouted the whole place around both of here and that was all we found. But still, we have a hunting outpost very convenient right next to it so that makes it a place worth coming back to so we are slowly accomplishing our goal uh, as I said at the, at the beginning of the episode is we want to have a series of places that we can go for sure to have whitetail that we can set up a rotation so we can come hunt like we hunted this place today and we build up yeah, we build up some hunting pressure so now we can go tomorrow, say, back to this lake, build up hunting pressure there. Have a good hunt. We know there's going to be deer there. And that will race some of this hunting pressure. Uh, the day after that, we can go to this lake, do a bit of hunting here. See, we've already erased the hunting pressure from this zone. That's safe to come back to. We can hunt this place and know we're going to have white-tailed deer at that drink time and we're going to get some kills then come to the next day come down to uh where's our other lake here we can come down here and by the time we cycle through all these areas and get through all of them our first zone should be clean of hunting pressure and we can just repeat that loop and then we can start having sustained hunts where every hunt we're taking buck, we're getting respawns, and hopefully getting larger respawns, and getting closer and closer to one day having that great one spawn in. So, we got us a few kills today. Let's check our uh, codex here, our hunting log, our latest harvest, and this will tell us what we got today. We got one two three four five six seven kills today pretty good and we took five of the collared peccaries like i said that was our our first day we've we've taken any of them as a uh trophy or as a kill and two of them were uh, uh well three of them were uncommon we had two dark brown fur types and one dark gray fur type with them which is pretty cool uh, so we made us a bit of money I uh, did not notice honestly how much money we have when we started today my bad on that uh, let's see how we did with trophy ratings we did have one white tail it was rated as 170.3 uh, which is pretty high. I'm not exactly sure what the what the ratings are. And we had us one peccary at 105.2. So all in all, a pretty good day. We discovered some zones. 
we got us some kills, we got us some money, and we had a good day doing it. Uh, so, I think we're going to close up this episode today. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, if you're a new viewer, we, we hope you come back again. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, we're glad to see you each and every time you stop back. Man, we're glad to see you. Uh, if you did find the video helpful, uh, informative at all, if it helped your game out, then I know I'm doing my job. And if you, if you want to leave a, a like, a follow, thumbs up, what have you, uh, we truly appreciate each and every one of them. Every little bit of your support does wonders for this channel. So, again, I'm the Gray Hair Gamer, your host. So, until next time, Hunter, and also from Gunner the Wonder Dog, saying, keep your eyes on that prize, Hunter, because you never know where that diamond's going to be. It could be right around the corner from you. So, until then, take care. We'll see you again in our next episode.